Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Prime Comments. And again, another shortened week this week. We had a ton of videos go up. Uh, limited down to only four comments, probably our lowest amount total. Uh, but I don't have a lot of time today to get out a longer episode, so we're going to try to keep it short. We'll see what happens. Uh, and the first comment we're going to tackle this week comes from the death of NeoGaf and how I feel about it. Mr. Habes had this to say. Where do you think everyone will go now? And then it was replied to by Dex, who said, Reddit. It's that simple. I don't think it is that simple. Uh, it appears that ResetEra.com is the new NeoGAF. Uh, NeoGAF itself is back online, but it's kind of a shell of its former self. He had a lot of people torpedoing, torpedoing their accounts, getting banned. Um, and, and in general, uh, there seems to be a very tiny user base still there now obviously it's a heck of a lot more active than our own forums but neogaf was you know the house of thousands upon thousands of fans and reset era launched a few days after neogaf went down and reset era i'm actually a member of reset era as well um and it was approved for being part of nintendo prime which was cool like zelda informer was why i was approved for neogaf so nintendo prime approved me for reset era is great uh, Reset Era was founded by some of the former mods and some new people, including people I really respect in the industry, like ZHugeX off of Twitter, um, and, and just you know a, a bunch of people that I, I actually use um, for sourcing, for finding out like leaks and stuff. Uh, it's really great to see some of them behind Reset Era. Uh, people who have just haven't been part of NeoGAF for a very long time, if ever. Um, and... Yeah, there. I think at the time of me, uh, like reporting on this, talking about this, there's like twenty thousand members that have joined Reset Era. Uh, twenty thousand. Think about that. Uh, that's just an insane amount of people to join. Now I know some people say, "Oh, Reddit," because Reddit is more popular, has more people. Uh, but when you look at, I'm gonna throw up a screenshot quickly here of. Uh, the front side of Reset Era right now, and then the front side of gaming, uh, the gaming, the main gaming channel on uh, Reddit, and you'll quickly see that there's a big reason people prefer something like Reset Era slash NeoGaf over Reddit. It's a very different kind of place than Reddit is. So no, Reddit couldn't simply just replace NeoGaf. Uh, Reset Era appears to be the new replacement for it. I don't know how many people there that are developers, and uh, I know there's a bunch of media people there, but yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, I'm enjoying my time at Reset Era so far. Everyone seems to be enjoying their time there, um, and there doesn't seem to be as much political discourse and a bunch of the other things that um, really draw, drove NeoGAF to being irrelevant for some people over the years. Anyways, moving on. Uh, our second comment that we're going to talk about from this week comes from the Pokemon on Switch features their best developers while younger staff work on the 3DS. And Daniel Evans had this to say, New developers or vets don't matter much to me. But certain personalities have a huge effect. Miyamoto, for example, aims to simplify games he oversees. He might not be a great fit for Pokemon, but for Mario, he's perfect. Just keep him away from that Paper Mario. I hope that both Pokemon teams see the value in changing up the stories and goals in Pokemon. We've seen a move away from badges, and I think there's still so much room to expand and experiment with the world of Pokemon. There's obviously a lot of room to expand the world of Pokemon. There, there's no... You're not going to see any argument from me suggesting otherwise. Um... It's interesting that you say that uh, Miyamoto's goal is to simplify games he oversees, whereas I don't think that's the case with Miyamoto. I think Miyamoto likes to uh, head down too far down the new idea route. As an example, he definitely didn't simplify the new Star Fox game. Um, he actually made it more complicated by forcing these controls into the game that a lot of people just didn't want. If you, for the, for the parts of the game you can play without using motion controls, it is highly enjoyable. Now, uh, but yeah, I don't think Miyamoto is really a, a key cog there for your example. But I do understand uh, what you're saying, that obviously it matters who's like the director of the game more so than it matters which team is making it, whether it's younger developers or newer developers. Uh, newer developers tend to have more fresh ideas than the older developers that are kind of stuck in their ways. 
Uh, that's usually the contrast. Like Breath of the Wild had a lot of newer developers working on it with a lot of fresh ideas injected into it. Uh, whereas uh, we could talk about AJ Anoma's influence all we want on the game, which is clearly there. You know, he he controls the whole Zelda uh, series, so clearly it's there. Clearly the director's influence is there. But more than that, the developers at Nintendo get a lot of input into games. Now, Game Freak is separate from Nintendo. They're their own thing. Nintendo technically doesn't own Game Freak. So uh, how they handle development might not be the same way that Nintendo does, where Nintendo lets their developers inject their ideas into the game, and then the director and uh, the person in charge of it uh, decides that those ideas stay in. But, yeah, it's it's definitely going to be interesting. I don't know what they're going to do. I, I didn't even know they abandoned the badge system. This is how out of touch I am with Pokemon. Um, but, yeah, there's definitely a lot that could still be done with Pokemon, as is evidenced by the ongoing... Uh, anime series and the fact the games have been around for so long. It's not like they're out of ideas. So, yeah, we'll see. I have high hopes for that game. Uh, our next comment comes from the YouTuber band Three Months for live streaming Super Mario Odyssey pre-launch. And these last two comments we're going to take I have to do with Mario. Um, and El <laughs> Eladaya, I can't even pronounce it, A-E-L-A-D-Y-A, -A uh, had this to say, His account should be permanently banned and his console should be bricked, along with the Nintendo account permanent ban. That's a little harsh, because when we reported on that, when I talked about it, um, obviously it sucked it was happening. We don't know 100% if it was an illegal copy of the game. I suggested that he had an illegal copy of the game, uh, but we don't know that. Uh, some people are saying that he just had um, a, a legal copy of the game from a retailer that broke street date, um, which to me felt confusing, because he lives in Hong Kong, and they don't have Switch games in Hong Kong. They don't have Nintendo Switches in Hong Kong. So having a retailer in Hong Kong break street date when they're not even supposed to have the system in the games is really weird. That doesn't mean you can't get a hold of it. I'm sure there's a black market. But then if you're getting it from a black market, that's illegal anyways. Uh, maybe he got it while he was out of country. Maybe he came to the U.S. or some other local, you know, of a country that's next to China and was able to get it by by some retailer in like Taiwan or something that broke street date and then brought it back to Hong Kong. I have no idea. Um, but that's why I'm a little hesitant to say he didn't get an illegal copy of the game when we're talking about the fact that uh, that happened. And obviously, some people pointed out how there's no official emulator for Switch. You're right. There's no, there's no official emulator for Switch. Um... But that doesn't mean that he can't find a way to run the game locally on the Switch. Now, I know, as far as we are aware, there is no modding on Switch right now that allows you to download a ROM onto a cartridge or an SD card, throw it into the system, and play it natively. As far as we're aware, I did some research into this, there is nothing that is publicly aware, at least right now, of that being possible. And there might even be modders out there that are saying it's not possible. I don't know. All I know is, the guy played the game and streamed it, and he got a three-month ban. Uh, now, I don't think he should be permanently banned. The more and more I hear about this, the more and more I understand that it probably was a retail copy of the game, uh, no matter how he got his hands on it. Uh, I don't think he should be permanently banned. I think uh, three months is fine. Um, I know I suggested maybe his account should just be shut down if he was a leaker, but if he's I don't know. It's... Not like he was streaming it weeks beforehand, right? It was a few days beforehand, which helps his cause that it was a, a broken street date. I, I think three months is fine. I think he's learned his lesson already, in fact, and will probably never break, uh, even if he gets a game before street date, will probably never stream a game before street date again. Uh, Nintendo obviously did not take kindly to that. And, uh, yeah, I mean, life moves on. I know I was a lot harsher during that video, but... Uh, you know, when you, when you take time to reflect on things a little bit more, uh, you realize that maybe the situation was overblown a little bit. Uh, but again, if it was a leaked version and around, like I, everything I said stands. But yeah, we'll 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 step off the gas pedal there. Three months seems fair uh, for someone who probably didn't know they were doing anything wrong in the first place. Uh, moving on, uh, the last comment we're going to talk about this this week is a rather lengthy one and it comes from the super mario odyssey reviews are topping breath of the wild and my hype is exploding i mean you'll see i have odyssey up there on the tv i have the game i've streamed it a couple times plan to stream it later today if things work out um but which i know some of you guys would be overdosed with it we just had 5j i know 
uh, yesterday and today also streaming Super Mario Odyssey. But I don't care. I'm going to play it, so why not stream it? And Philip Stafford, one of our regulars, had this to say. People need to play more before writing a review. Because sadly, Mario is objectionally not a 10. It's a solid 9. There are some serious control issues. In the normal worlds, most of the controls are good, aside the hat. There's no Z targeting. Instead, you have to shake the controller to auto aim. Now, besides that being slower than hitting a button, the problem is shaking the controller can allow you to do the spin attack as well. So sometimes, when you just want to attack a nearby enemy about to hit you, you end up doing a long-winded spin attack. Another issue is you're not allowed to use the D-pad, which makes the platforming segments annoying. You need precise controls for precise platforming. You also need to hit ZL to duck in the 2D segments, which is unnatural as you can get. Then there's special areas like the bullet bill maze, Psy, where the actual controls flip-flop due to camera angles and which way you're facing. It's bad. These aren't small control issues, sadly. Why the bloody hell is there no Z-targeting, LOL, Nintendo? You're the one who invented such for crying out loud. What were you thinking? Don't get me wrong, it's still a great game, just nowhere near a 10. Now, I, don't, I am not reviewing Super Mario Odyssey, so I can't sit there and defend why other people gave it a 10. But let me just say this. Uh, nothing is objectionally not a 10 because reviews are subjective. This is something that bothers me uh, when we talk about reviews in general. Are people that, that feel like reviews need to be objective. If you want an objective review, go watch the technical analysis of the game from Digital Foundry. That's the only, the only way you can be objective about a game. Because when you're reviewing a product, it's about your experience with the game. So if you play the game and you're like, dude, this game's perfect, it's a 10, okay. You, you could try to argue against it, just like you're trying to do with the controls here. And I, I heard this kind of same argument really back in Skyward Sword, where all these people were complaining about the controls, complaining about the controls. I love the controls. So... Am, am I wrong for thinking that game is a hell of a lot better than other people think it is? No, I'm not wrong because it's my opinion. It's my experience with the game. and my experience with the game, it is a lot higher rated than other people's experience with the game. And just because those reviewers or certain reviewers, their experience with the game warrants it a 10 doesn't mean that your experience with the game is going to warrant it a 10. We're all very, very different people. Um, take an example, you know, I'm glancing at, you know, you basically say your issue with the game is controls. Uh, I've seen other people say that the game's too linear, too easy. I've seen other people say it's not as open as they would like. Yada, 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 yada. Like, it's all about personal preferences, right? Um, I don't like the fact there's no Z-targeting. I don't remember Mario ever having Z-targeting. Why would they add Z-targeting into Mario now when it's never been there just because you throw an item? I, I, I don't get that. Um, I think that takes away some of the skill of throwing the hat. I think what's cool about throwing Cappy is there are so many different, like if you go to the action menu and you look, there are so many different ways to throw Cappy and use Cappy. And now I can understand why some people might be frustrated with the motion controls. Uh, you're speaking to someone that has that happen sometimes. I'm using the Pro Controller for my entire playthrough. And if you think the motion controls are bad using like split Joy-Cons, you should try it with the Pro Controller. Although it appears I'm having less issue with the motion controls than some other people are. Um, as an example, to do a spin attack, let me grab the Pro Controller. To have my hat do a spin, I go like this. That makes the hat spin around with the Pro Controller. To have it, like after you throw the hat, to make it do the whole you know, auto-aim thing that you're talking about, which isn't technically auto-aiming. It's, uh, I forget what they call that. Um, it's homing in. Um, so, like, it, the hat's doing its own thing. I just have to go like this, which is very different motion from this. When I go like this, it spins. I go like this, it, it homes in. Um, and then there's certain, like, little flicking motions that'll make it do, like, the the vertical, and, and I don't know. There, there's just a whole bunch of moves. I haven't perfected all of them, but the motion controls haven't really been giving me an issue. And maybe it's because I'm using this instead of the Joy-Cons. I'm not really sure. Uh, I don't know. Now, obviously, Nintendo tells you the preferred way to play is the split Joy-Con mode. I haven't done that yet. So maybe when I will, I'll agree with some of your assessment. But then if your assessment falls apart when I'm using the Pro Controller, okay, then the criticism is just that the Joy-Cons are not the best way to play the game. Um, so I don't know. 
It, it's, I, I don't have as many issues with the controls as you do. I'm, in fact, the controls almost feel better to me because the game's in 60 frames per second. Like, Mario's responding to me way quicker than he did in other games, which I know some people are saying isn't happening, but it is for me. So I, I, I don't know. Um, again, a lot of things are subjective. And like, when you say you're not allowed to use a D-pad, which makes platforming segments annoying, you need precise controls. I haven't had a problem with that. We're in a 3D environment. The D-pad, to me, is useless in a 3D environment because you're not on a grid. Like... The D-pad works really well for grid-based platforming. That's not what this is. So I don't know why people keep saying they need a D-pad when there's nothing the D-pad is doing that the controls that can't do and do better. Just get better at using the stick. I, I, I don't get it. We're in a 3D environment. Um, even when you're in the 2D environment, none of those 2D spaces are so difficult that they have that level of platforming that you need that sort of precision for. Um, so I, I, I don't get it. At least from my experience so far. I haven't beaten the game, so maybe there's some segments like in the 2D part where a D-pad would be better. I don't know, but then again, uh, they probably figure most people playing aren't going to be like, oh, let me go up here and then go down and use the D-pad. Uh, especially when the game's designed for Joy-Cons that doesn't have a D-pad. I mean, it is what it is. Uh, and just just tackling some real... You, you seem to be, you know, like, needing to hit ZL to duck in 2D segments. I mean, whatever. Okay, I, I can see that's annoying, but I don't think it's unintuitive, as you suggest, or unnatural. It's just different. You know, it's just different. It's mapping it to a different button. I I don't really get why why that's suddenly a big issue. Um, again, for the most part, I just disagree with your general assessment of Super Mario Odyssey. Does that mean I think it's at a 10? No. But it doesn't mean that I can't see why others think it's a 10. It's all about the subjective nature of reviews. When you talk about objectively it is not a 10 objectively what do you know what reviews are reviews are subjective um objective things are technical analysis they're not um your experience with a game and that's what people read reviews for are for their experience with a game you know your experience with the game might tell you it's not a 10 because of these factors and that is 100 percent correct for you, that doesn't make it 100% correct objectively because there are going to be plenty of people that disagree with you. So, yeah, um, it's subjective. Reviews are all subjective. All of them. There's not a single review out there, no matter how much the reviewer might say, I'm taking an objective view, an objective view, an objective view. They're not unless they're just doing an analysis. If all they are doing is an analysis of the game and not impressions of the game or a review of the game, then fine. Like These aren't products, right? We're not talking about, you know, I can grab this wallet here and beyond the aesthetics, right? Beyond the aesthetics of this wallet, I could talk about the functionality of this wallet, right? About, you know, how many pockets it has, how easy it is to fold with a certain number of bills. And then I could take this and compare it to another wallet and compare how well that holds bills and how many cards it has and the quality and how it's held up over time. That you could be objective about. Now, I can't be, one thing I can't be objective of is this. You see this art pattern? You know, that's not an objective thing. This is a subjective opinion that I prefer this art pattern, this Breath of the Wild art pattern on here, compared to my other wallets that are plain black. Um, again, that's a subjective thing, but the objective thing would be talking about the capabilities of the wallet. So, um, that's what you can do with, like, a product. When you're talking about a game, a game is an experience. And when you're experiencing something, just like when you're watching a movie, there's no objective way to review that. There's just an analysis from a technical standpoint, and then there's the review. And those are two separate things. They are intermingled. Obviously, like if the game has major frame rate drops, that's a technical thing that can also affect your experience with the game. And technical things can obviously affect your experience with the game anyways. But yeah, I think you get my point, right? Reviews cannot be objective. Analysis can be. Reviews are completely, 100% subjective. So, yeah, when you say it, Odyssey can't be a 10 objectively, reviews aren't objective. So, anyways, folks, that's going to do it for this week on Prime Comments. If you have something to say about what I had to say, go down in the comments below. Let me know what's up. Uh, we just finished our Super Mario Odyssey giveaway. We, we'll have another giveaway happening uh, next week if we can get, or next, yeah, sometime next week if we can get... Uh, 5J, Mr. 5J Gaming, and his YouTube channel to 300 subs. A link to his channel down below. Obviously, keep subbing even if we hit 300. He deserves it. Follow his live streams. He does a great job. Anyways, folks, 
I'm Nathaniel Robert Jazz from Nintendo Prime. If you like this video, you know what to do. And if you dislike the video, hit that dislike button. Subscribe for more content. And I'll catch you in the next one.